just roll. Awesome. Well, well, welcome. Today we have Justin Ryder on the Know Your Numbers uh, podcast, the Better Books broadcast. Um, we are dedicated and motivated to bring the accounting and finance knowledge of those in the real estate profession to the general Sweet. public. So uh, here we are, Justin. Welcome. Thank you for doing this. I, I appreciate yeah. uh, your time and, and your knowledge. So uh, if, if we could just get right into it, uh, introduce yourself, what you're all about. Uh, I know you have an interesting uh, story, so I'd love to hear a little bit more and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, gosh. Well, I was born in, um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to start there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a commercial real estate advisor in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Lexington's a small town in central Kentucky. It's about 340,000 people, home of University of Kentucky. Um, so we're doing deals uh, all over that smaller area, maybe into Louisville, northern Kentucky, but mostly right in Lexington. Yep. Um, I've been in full-time brokerage for three years, coming in from the marketing and digital strategy side. Um, I think your your questions were really interesting because the sales and marketing piece coming into brokerage, I was, I was really excited about and had a good solid knowledge base and, you know, sort of core coming in. It really was the numbers, the math, um, the financial aspects of what we do that I have been on a journey in learning and growing and sort of hoping to, to uh, share some of that on the show today. I hope it's not overly basic. Um, I think a lot of what I'm going to say is, sort of the black the blocking and tackling of just everyday finance life. Mm-hmm. Um, it truly isn't rocket science, right? right? Like compounding money is a really, really powerful concept. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely did not come into the business with that mindset. Now that is my everyday mindset. That's awesome. Well yeah, that's that's good to know. And I that's one thing I'm trying to do is kind of make this as interesting as possible because numbers can be kind of mundane and boring. So um, I guess we could start off right there is you you have a background that's not necessarily what people would traditionally consider a finance background or somebody who's numbers oriented. So for somebody who might be in a sales position, a marketing position, or, or they just don't think they have the capabilities to succeed in the investing world, what would you say to them, what are some, some key takeaways that you've learned along the way and, and something that might benefit them? Yeah. Well, first of all, you got to read like crazy. Mm -hmm. You got to study and you have to train. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, the best money I've spent in uh, commercial real estate has not been on property. It's been on training. Uh, The CCIM designation has been paramount in my own career in understanding how to precisely underwrite properties, Mm -hmm. um, how that might apply to a client of mine, but to your point on your show, how it really might apply to me. Um, CCIM taught me the time value of money, taught Mm -hmm. me leverage debt, how to see it in a healthy way, how to use it properly, how to look at projects from a three, five, seven year standpoint. So, Mm -hmm. you know, to the real answer to your question is that training, that designation And I guess if someone's listening and they're in commercial real estate thinking, what next level type thing could I do? CCIM would be number one um, in my book. And then just read. I mean, there's so many books out there, Chris. I I haven't listened to a ton of your shows. I'm sure you've mentioned a couple of these that I'll say, Mm -hmm. but like The Millionaire Next Door. Yep. (laughs) You know, so have you talked about that book before? No, I have not, but it's on the shelf. (laughs) So link it in the show notes, man. I mean, here's the deal. I have read that book and it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. It was a whole new perspective shift for me and change for me. Um, I I not only read that book, but I I actually got to read that the lessons in a person who's my like sort of my business mentor around our, our office here who started our company. I work with him on some business brokerage stuff as well as commercial real estate stuff, but he is the walking millionaire next door. <laughs> like he does not drive a in, insanely expensive car. His house has been paid off for 20 years mm-hmm. and he's had wealth compounding for decades and decades and decades. And so I see in him the principles that I see in that book. Um, 
early on, I made a huge mistake in thinking growing up, Mm -hmm. I can see who's rich, right? I can see who has the wealth. It's the people with the flashy stuff, whatever. And this is 101. So I'm sorry to be so basic, but the millionaire next door flipped my perspective. It's not the people typically that are driving liabilities or spending a ton on housing. It's the people that are like my mentor, Steve, um, who are saving patiently, paying stuff off. Mm -hmm. They have debt, but it's good debt. Um, So that book, man, I think that book should be uh, like a prerequisite to talking with Chris McCormick. Yeah, (laughs) that's awesome. (laughs) I will require that. How about that? Yeah, everybody else that's coming on, you got to read that book. So (laughs) that's awesome, Justin. I I like that. Um, You mentioned a little bit about about having good debt, and this is something that I've heard previously. Um, What do you mean by good debt? How could somebody who has been brought up to say that you're not supposed to take on a liability better understand this concept of, of good debt? Yeah. And I, so I kind of, I look at things too, from a faith perspective, Chris, Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the idea, like there's a whole school of thought, um, like the Dave Ramsey, um, financial types of guides where someone might be listening and they might be very passionate about having no debt, like he sort of preaches. And I, I think, and I'm not a Dave Ramsey expert by any means. Um, I think he's more talking about your, credit card Mm -hmm. debt or high interest car loan um, type debt that can ultimately, and probably someone listening has that. And, you know, as I have in my life, it's, it's can make you feel a little buried or trapped um, underneath payments. Now, when you get into investing in properties, what you'll quickly find is people use debt, i.e. a loan from a bank so that their cash can go further. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people in our business call it levering up. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, not sure where your listeners are maybe thinking about investing in their first property. They may have 40 properties and be, you know, have a hundred million dollars of property. Either way, you can use someone else's money to make your cash go further versus just, you know, looking at an investment property and saying, I'm going to put down 100% of the purchase price of my money. Mm-hmm. And I know exactly what my return is. You can increase that return um, by using a bank's money. Um, now, this is a whole maybe separate topic for a separate day, but I, I would mention too that there are great benefits. And again, going back to reading, when you think mm-hmm. about the rich dad, poor dad yeah. series, and there are inherent built-in benefits to actually borrowing money and being able to write off taxes, depreciation, yeah. interest. Um, so the there are some, I guess, twofold uh, reasons I mentioned why it, it might be worth it mm-hmm. to work with someone you trust, look at a few properties as investment properties and, and realize there's more to owning property than just the cash flow. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. No, and I, I do. Uh, I know that we could get into the weeds by by talking about all the uh, business expenses and the interest deductions and and all that good stuff on the, the tax side of things. But how important is it? You mentioned someone you trust building a team. How important is your your network that you have around you to finding the right deals, knowing that you're getting the right information and ultimately making the right decisions? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what you'd expect, right? Mm-hmm. It is uh, find good people and grow old together. Mm-hmm. Um, the networking out there in the commercial real estate world will be your lifeline, mm-hmm. answering phone calls, returning voicemails, just the mundane sort of crazy things. You have to look at those things like they're gold, mm-hmm. like they're truly the opportunity of a lifetime could ring your phone today. Mm-hmm. Um Specifically for me, I love that as an office of brokers, there's 10 or 12 other people who have a similar job to me. We do share and find and invest together. We try and grow together. Mm -hmm. So those relationships are strategic. You know, I would say I have at this point probably 30 or so clients that I would say are integral to my business and life, and I'm able to serve them 
help them as you know it is as it helps me in my brokerage career develop um personally my financial advisor is one of my sort of friends and mentors um you know i call him about money stuff life stuff spiritual stuff family mm. stuff um you know he's a good good friend of mine uh my cpa has been integral because he has a background in real estate and loves to have, you know, sort of real estate professional clients. So his advice to me on just how to organize and handle my brokerage business and investment business, I just couldn't do it without him. I mm -hmm. mean, I'd be turbo tax comes to mind. Like yeah. I have no idea. I right. have no idea what I would do um, yeah. and couldn't do it. So, okay. Wow. That's awesome. Means everything. Yeah. I, I do want to actually touch on that a little bit because that's something that's been brought to my attention in recent days was the importance of of setting up your companies correctly and to to the extent that that you can and you're willing to how has what what knowledge have you been able to to gather about the importance of setting up companies and and what's something that that somebody who might be looking to invest out of state might be going into a couple different states um what's something they can keep in mind for for business development and uh i guess uh creation if that if that makes sense and and correct me if you need some further no no yeah. i think that's a good word i mean i i know a lot of people who have said like ideally speaking i would love to buy my first investment property with a group of partners tomorrow mm -hmm. and there's no operating agreement in effect, there's no idea sort of what an LLC is, mm -hmm. what that might mean for them. You know, so I think I, I think some solid legal advice um, starting out would would really help. And for me personally, there are, you know, just major differences between LLCs and S Corps and how they're taxed. And mm -hmm. I think someone would really have to talk to a professional. You know, I wouldn't pretend to be able to give that advice. Mm -hmm. um, someone would have to talk to a professional and say, what would be best for my situation? My unique situation at this time, as I'm sort of processing, I'm looking at this level of income. This is what I'd like to do. This is where I'd like to be in six months, five years, at the end of my life necessarily. Right. Um, how should I set this up? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's amazing, Chris, and you know this probably from all your guests. Yeah. So many different ways to go about this process and right. everybody's journey and story is unique. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's someone around you, I think for anyone listening, there's someone around you who has the experience and the desire to advise you, maybe not for free, mm -hmm. but it would be worth it to get good advice on how to live out your passion. Right. Um, so, Wow, that's good. And yeah, that's uh we might need to connect a little bit offline for that because uh I might be reaching out to you and, and your CPA for for some further advice if, if that's yeah. doable. But uh one thing, one more thing I do want to dive into is the the commercial aspect of this real estate because we have had a lot of residential multifamily uh investors and, and that's what people think about is is those those single family homes that you rent out to a family. But what what can you explain to a listener about the commercial real estate world and is it possible for somebody just getting started to to dip their toes into it or, or do you have to have a, a big uh foundation of experience or capital under your belt to do so you don't no. um have to have uh anything okay. but but passion and the desire to succeed yeah. um you know, one of the most amazing things about commercial real estate brokerage is you have to be sharp to do this job. And I know a lot of sharp people that do this job. Um, you know, you have to have a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. You do not have to technically have a giant pile of money. Mm -hmm. So like my door into commercial real estate was through a brokerage. Now, do you have to have cash to invest? Sure. Not, well, not necessarily, but in some sense, you've got to have equity in something, or if you're going to borrow, um, you've got to have a way in the door for a property. 
But really the thing that comes to mind when you say that is a person. Mm -hmm. Like, I think if you can get somebody's playbook that you trust, you know, most of my clients and or investors, they, they, for the most part, have done the same thing over and over again. They get into a system that works for them. They have relationships that are lifelong. Um, and they find something that works and repeat it. I think that's pretty compelling. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're looking to bust in, meet with a couple of brokers. I mean, if, if like if right now, knowing what I know, if I were thinking to myself, I'd like to buy my first investment property, mm-hmm. how would I get in? I would probably try and reach out to, you know, look on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. look on LoopNet, Crexy, KCREA, that's for us in Kentucky. Look at your local site and see who is listing a lot of properties. If you can find a CCIM, great. You know, there's a certain amount of underwriting expertise that goes into that designation that you know someone's serious about looking at property as an investment. Certainly, the person does not have to be a CCIM to know that. Um, So don't get me wrong. But just have coffee with a few people. Ask them what what deals they're doing. Ask them their what their clients, what journeys they're on, mm-hmm. and develop those relationships. I think relationships will get you into the game. Right. Um, so I think that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But you don't have to have anything or know anything to get right. in and do really well with this. You just have to be aggressive and bold and willing to build momentum mm-hmm. yeah. uh, that's my number one thing chris i think you know I, I know we connected on linkedin that's all pretty much all i post about right is today is the perfect day to build momentum and once you start mm-hmm. building that in this business momentum begets momentum activity begets activity and before you know it you've got four or five things going on and you've got someone who say hey manage this property for me if you can improve it we'll do another one together Mm -hmm. and you know you just keep rolling it so i would say don't be afraid to start small Mm. there's really no good time in the market right people people have been saying for since people have been saying stuff that (laughs) we should wait until the time is right yeah um there's great deals in every market cycle Mm -hmm. amen amen that's awesome yeah it sounds like i mean this is a it is designed to be a numbers podcast, but a lot of times, I mean, it ends up being a mindset relationship podcast. And from what I've learned, what I've heard, it's that's, there's nothing that beats that. And and that's, that's yeah. incredible. And, well, and you're, you're smart to take it there, man, because you know, this business is all about people, right? It's, it's not about transactions and mm-hmm. people do, people miss that sadly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I see people leave the business or not do well. It's because they're not focused on people and they're focused on just the transactions and those become the end. You know, those become the goal. Yep. Um, I think if you focus on people and you have in your mind, I'm go- I want to be as precise as possible. You can do both. Right. Like you can nail the numbers, but put people first. That's cool. And that, that leads into one final topic that, that you've touched upon. And I, I would, if you're comfortable with it, also like to highlight is this concept of faith. Uh, you've talked about it a little bit. And I think that is present throughout a lot of successful individuals. How does that play into your role as an investor, as a, a networker? Um, I mean, father, I do. You, you have kids, right, Justin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, awesome. How does, how does faith pull, play into the whole the big picture, uh, Justin Ryder, life journey, and uh, yeah, where he wants to go. Yeah, no, thank you for asking. I, I mean, I think the word steward comes mm-hmm. to mind, really. A steward is in charge of something that's not theirs, and I do my absolute best, and I'm not perfect at all, and my faith sort of leads me into this, right. um, which is to look at, you know, my little business is God's business. It's not mm-hmm. mine, and so the 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 money that pumps through it 
whether it's a small amount, bigger amount, medium sized amount, regardless of the perspective, I don't have ultimate ownership of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that leads me to Chris, your point of like, I'm, if, if, if I'm, if it's not mine, I have to be precise with it. Mm -hmm. And secondly, um, besides precision, I, I get to be generous mm -hmm. with it. And those two things have helped me sort of, at least I try to let them help me many days where I'm just grinding to the next deal, the next thing, trying to get stuff done to sort of step back, not from in the business and see just my perspective on the business that, hey, this isn't mine to operate. Right. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. So whatever I have access to, to serve, to give, to encourage my family to have an impact um, through this, to make memories together. That's the real life stuff. So that sets you up for, you know, the money piece and the precise piece sets you up to make memories mm -hmm. and impact your community. Um, you've, you, if you've had anybody who's in that later stage of life on the podcast, I'm sure that they've sort of echoed and this is what every single person I know has echoed it. No one at the end of their life is worried about how much money they have. Right. Like they're worried about what impact did I make? What legacy am I leaving? Is, did I leave a positive impact on my family mm -hmm. traditions, care, love, generosity, service? You know, did I leave something real behind? Yeah. that's 101 it's blocking and tackling it's stuff we all know but day to day when you're in the grind it's really hard to keep that into perspective right so my faith helps me very much and i appreciate you asking about that my faith reminds me to stop pray mm -hmm. remember it's not mine i'm here to serve and it's all a gift right like today is a gift the breath we have is a gift so let's take advantage of it while we can and build some momentum amen amen man that's awesome and i appreciate you sharing because you know uh i feel like it's it's something that i want to to get more people to to realize and talk about because i think we all want to be of the most service and also understand that this is much bigger than all of us so thank you justin i i, I do appreciate it. i want to be a little cognizant of your time um i know we probably yeah. allotted a little bit more but uh any closing thoughts? Uh, sometimes we, we talk about mindset. Are there any any tidbits that you can leave for the audience or, or something? I mean, I'll take it too. Any any mindset shifts that, that you've had to overcome uh, in your time in the real estate world or owning a business or being a father, being a, a faithful man? Is there anything that, that sticks out to you as, as the, the one piece that if you didn't learn it, you might not be where you are today? <laughs> Well, I mentioned read like crazy. Yeah. Most of what I read are finance books, investing books. I have made some mistakes early on investing in like a friend of a friend's restaurant. Yeah. You know, like right. don't do that. I mean, yeah. if you're starting out just by dividend paying stocks or like I said, solid properties or have someone advise you on um what to do in that and that mostly came from books you know reading one of my favorite things to read are business memoirs mm -hmm. so just reading about people that hustled right. put it all on the line took risk and it and it worked out for them mm -hmm. you know those to me are very positive affirming character building types of things uh, to read there's also some finance books that i think provide little tidbits like there's a book called I will teach you to be wit. I will teach you to be rich right. by Ram it Sethi, I think is yeah. how you say his name. Yep. Simple thing. You know, if you forget to pay your credit card, <laughs> you could just tell them that you're not going to pay the fee. Right. And most of the time they say, okay, we'll just waive it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know that. Like I never, I never knew that before I read it in that book. Um, simple budgeting type things there's a lot of great tools out there like mint.com for budgeting and sort of keeping your tabs on your um personal finances um so i i would say that's 
probably it. Read like crazy. Study mm-hmm. other people's lives that you want to emulate. Keep building momentum. Right. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Justin. I appreciate your time. Uh, once again, I appreciate your wisdom. And uh, I hope this was as fruitful for you as it was for me and, and the audience. But uh, it, w- it was awesome, man. Please send me the link w- once yep. it's uh, posted. And I appreciate you putting it together. Look forward to seeing you in the future. Of course. Yeah, we'll talk very soon. Thank you, man. Thanks, Chris. See ya.